Although there are a bunch of great World War II movies, there are, there are certain things that they suffer from. Um, films like Saving Private Ryan, even Schindler's List, some of the greatest films of all time that are about World War, World, World War II suffer from one thing, and that's the fact that they overly indulge themselves into the carnage. They depend on shock. They depend on the fact that there was a holocaust, that many Jewish people died, and they just try to work that shit into our heads, and they try to use all of that into the emotional element of the film. They really, at times, they really don't care about anything else but the carnage and how it how that affected the people. Now, of course, the Holocaust is a big thing. And obviously, the Holocaust affected far too many people for us to ignore. Schindler's List is a great example of a film that's not overly indulging itself into the carnage, but even in the end, it kind of have to admit, some of the admiration for the film comes from the fact that it effectively given you that carnage, it effectively given you that shock. So, I want to see a movie, a World War II movie, that did not have to, you know, depend on the shock element of this era, you know, just a film about f pure cinema, about the people, and not about the war. And Au revoir, Les Enfants, or however the hell you want to pronounce the, the film, is basically that movie that does not indulge itself into the carnage. In fact, the film at first doesn't even really feel like a World War II movie. movie. Like, okay, it's in France, and, you know, it's in the 40s, so obviously World War II is happening, but at first, we never even fucking mention World War II. At first, it just feels like a really normal dorm school, it's a really no normal boarding school for, you know, it's based on Christianity. There are kids, they just, they're just hanging around. They're acting like a, lot, a bunch of fucking idiots. They're selfish. They're fucking jerks. Some of them are nice. Some of them are fun. They like to read books. They talk about girls having small racks. It's kind of your, or, you know, ordinary high, sc high school, middle school bullshit. But there's this... Slowly, the film slowly progresses into a very unsettling mood. We start to indicate, the film starts to indicate certain bits of hatred towards Jewish people among the characters. We see German soldiers, we see bombs, you know, we hear bombs and we hear sirens in the background. Slowly, World War II's presence emerges within the very randomness of the ordinary and at the very end, without really giving any, you know, gut-punching scene, the film basically indicates that there is, in fact, a carnage going on somewhere in this world. It's just not here. And we're not going to show you that carnage, but we're going to show you how it affects people. And this is how, it, how the film does it. It tries to focus on children. It tries to focus on these two kids, Julian and Jean, and they focus on the friendship of these two characters. They both like reading books. They're kind of smart. They both like, they both like studying. They both, um, anyway, they have a lot, a lot in common, you know, and they be, at first, they don't like each other because, um, Jean's kind of awkward and obviously because he's a Jewish person, he's trying to blend in. He's not trying to stand out. But as they, start to kind of bundle up together. You know, the teacher tells him to be nice to him, and, you know, they realize they both like reading books. They go through some fucked up shit with some German soldiers, and at the end, they become friends. And because the film focuses on this absolute pure element of filmmaking, which is character development, and because it doesn't indulge itself into the shock of World War II, the film feels very purely made. And at the very end, when the two become separated, and this is not even a spoiler, I'm just going to tell you this. The film does not sugarcoat anything. In the end, shit happens and we can't do anything about it. And so at the end, when they become separated, and there's no sentimental music playing, there's nothing overly cinematic about it, they just get separated. And you see 
Julian's face and you see the tears in his eye. Not, not a single tear fall from it, but you see his eyes swelling up. You see the tears about to fall. And we kind of look at that facial expression for a long time. And that's all we fucking need. That's all we need to understand that the Holocaust, this war, is affecting people. Not just people in Auschwitz, not just people around the world whose houses, houses are getting bombed, but people who are simply innocent and people who actually care about the people who are getting hurt are also getting affected. This film focuses so much on the purity of cinema. It focuses so much on storytelling on character development, on dialogue, on the simplest forms of filmmaking just to build us up to an emotional gut punch that does not rely on any shock at all. It simply builds up these two characters that we extremely care for because the whole film focuses on the purest aspect of filmmaking that at the end it all pays off. We don't need some indulgence. You know, we don't need some overly phony element of World War II. The film doesn't need to use the Holocaust as a tool. It simply needs to indicate its existence. And by simply building up these two characters into extremely care, caring characters, the film works perfectly well. In fact, the film is not even boring. The, the things they do are very fun because they're, it's such ordinary things that you just kind of laugh along with them. It's, it's, it's things that you do with your friends when you're kids. Um, you talk about girls. You talk about, you know, your freaking piano teacher who's fucking hot. Um, you, you talk about how you hate school. You talk about the food. You talk about the bullies. You talk about cigarettes. It's such normal things, and yet we, we're so invested into every single moment of it because it's part of our lives too. It's not phony at all. And that's how the build-up really works well as well. The filmmaker knows exactly how children act. And because he knows this, he focuses on it so well that we just get invested into in these characters very naturally. You know, they read Arabian Nights just to get a hard-on. That's what teenagers would probably do back in the 40s. And if we didn't have any fucking porn, internet porn, right, within our reach, we're probably going to do that as well. Um, in fact, quite frankly, um, at, and at the end, it does also indicate, you know, it's not simply this, oh, friendship it's so, it's so much more powerful than war. And because even they're separated, they care about each other. No, there are aspects of this film that tells us that human beings are still absolutely terrible human beings. Like, there's this scene with the nurse. And the nurse tells the German soldier where the Jewish kid is. Like, those scenes effectively show that even in this carnage, when people should care about each other the most, there are still people who just want to get away from the carnage and in, in the expense of other people's lives. It still effectively shows why war is terrible. But like I said, and I will repeat, the purity of the filmmaking really effectively tells these characters story, these, and we care about them so much, and at the end, without overly indulging and depending on the carnage, not... You know, it, by not using World War II as a tool, the film feels pure, and yet we still get the same emotional gut punch that a film that does depend on the violence would get, would give us. The film is fucking great. It's a masterpiece. How can I not say it is? Um, there's a scene in this film where they're just watching a Charlie Chaplin short. I think it's called The Immigrant, and it's him on a, bu on a boat. And obviously Charlie Chaplin is probably the embodiment of pure filmmaking. And you see these kids just watching this film and they're enjoying it. They're having the laugh of their lifetime. They're enjoying this moment of solidarity, togetherness, while watching this purity of filmmaking. And that's really what this film is as well. It's a film that really gets people together and admire the pure filmmaking and really acknowledge the pure human emotion that comes from the pure filmmaking. It doesn't indulge in phoniness. It just tells it as it is without showing off. 
that makes this film a masterpiece. So yeah, au revoir les enfants, masterpiece. Bye.